Hello chaps and chapesses, and today we're going to talk about the central highlands in Iceland fishing for trout and char. Iceland is probably one of my favourite countries to fish. There's just so much fishing there. I feel after 22 years of fishing in that country, I'm still only scratching the surface and I'm still only learning what it really has to offer. This year, as you've seen in a previous film, I decided that I was actually going to leave the salmon fishing behind for a little bit and go and explore some of the trout and char opportunities, which is something we seem to have been asked for a lot more recently. After my little expedition to Thingvatavatn, uh, I then went up into the central highland area with Christian from Fish Partner and he showed me the phenomenal fishery that they have up there based on two different river systems, the Kaldekvist and the Tungnau. Try saying those two when you've had a drink or two. So these two rivers are located up on the central highlands plateau which is about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes drive straight out of Reykjavik in the sort of southwesterly direction. Both river systems offer something very, very unique and very different. And I have to say, when we climbed up out of the green lower valleys that uh, is where most of the salmon fishing happens and ended up on this central highlands plateau, it feels like you're entering into another whole different world. The green makes way for this kind of larval interior. Um, and through this amazingly, desolately beautiful landscape, flows these two incredible rivers. Kaldoklist is about 16 miles long, Tungnau is about 8 miles long, and this is only fished by a small number of fishermen, so it really is an incredible playground to hunt the large arctic char and the big brown trout that live up in this area. Kaldoklist is quite a big river, and it cuts through this moraine and boulder strewn landscape with large open boulder strewn pools and larval cuts that descend into a turquoise coloured water which is a perfect environment for these big Icelandic ice age brown trout and char. This is not your traditional dry fly area. Uh, if you're going to fish up here for these bigger fish you certainly need to be able to use all of the tools and techniques in your box so it is going to be a combination of dry fly fishing, nymph fishing and also streamer fishing, which is something I have to say I was relatively new to. I've never really fished specifically for char before. Uh, I've caught a few as a bycatch, if you like, fishing on lower reaches of different salmon rivers. But to target them specifically, I was pretty excited about. And Christian very quickly put me at ease and taught me how this game was played. See that one in front of the rock? Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got him. See that one over there? See yeah. that one? Yeah. See that one? Yeah, lots of fish. See that one? Yeah. See that one? <laughs> that one? <laughs> oh, well, we have no excuse for not catching anything. For those of you who've never caught large arctic char, and when I say large we're talking in the sort of two to five pound area um, and an exceptional fish up here is probably about seven, which is pretty big for a river arctic char. These fish are strong, and can be very aggressive and for some strange reason they don't seem to spook too much from fishermen. We found ourselves wading in areas where actually the fish would just kind of sit there which I found a bit weird but I did discover quite quickly that they are extremely powerful and a lot of fun to fish for. They like a lot of these uh, deeper pools that flow through Caldoclist and they like this kind of colder water environment and you will find them in all sorts of different situations, whether it really is temperature driven, so it is weather driven, so it's not really a time of year situation, you're going to be fishing uh, dictated by what conditions you have available. So sometimes that could be sipping small dry flies off the surface, which is pretty unusual for char fishing, and sometimes it could be bumbling heavier nymphs along the bottom and bumping them into their faces, and also sometimes they will take small streamers quite aggressively. 
So all in all, they're a pretty cool fish to catch and something which was a bit different. And the colors, oh my word, they are a stunning fish to catch on fly. The big ice age brown trout that you find up in this area, there are not huge numbers of them. I wouldn't say that they are prolific, but the ones you find are big and pretty territorial and they are also pretty carnivorous. So although you will have an opportunity to try and catch them on nymphs and maybe big dries, predominantly for these big brownies, you're probably going to be fishing streamers and you're gonna know when you hit one because they come out like a pike hidden behind various structure and hammer the fly, which is extremely exciting. It's a bit like saltwater fly fishing and that's probably why I get such a kick out of it. Streamer fishing really was a big eye-opener for me and something I would like to do a lot more of. What's really cool about Caldercliffe is it's a huge river with lots of different environments to find fish in. So sometimes you can be looking in little rock pools, uh, sometimes there are big open expanses of water where you will find fish hidden behind boulders and structure, and other times you will find them milling around in these deep larval cuts which you can actually creep up over the top of the cliffs and see them below you, or even actually get to a point where your guide can spot the fish and guide you onto them. And now that makes it really exciting and brings it back to one of the reasons I love fishing in Iceland so much, is a lot of it is a vigil. While fishing with Christian, we explored large quantities of the Caldercliffs. We fished the lower parts, uh, not too far away from where the lodge is, and found lots of char, all racked up, which we could see from above. And then you could actually almost wade up into the pool and then just start nymphing through it until eventually one would, uh, would take the fly. Um, and then you just had to hang on, because they are, they are very powerful. And then up through the waterfall systems and these big cuts in the ground, which is an extraordinary geographical feature to see even in its own right and to be fishing in an environment like this is pretty cool and then up through the waterfalls you fish the base of the waterfalls where there are deep pockets and you often find fish in there and then right up into the upper area of the river where you literally feel like you're in a lunar landscape there is no green uh, you might get some lichen and everything else has probably been killed off by permafrost during the winter time but this environment is an extraordinary place to be hunting big brown trout and they are living there and have been doing so since the last ice age. So also as I mentioned before you're going to be fishing another river system based from the same central highlands lodge and that is a river called the Tungnau which is in complete contrast almost to Caldercliffe. This is a much smaller river in terms of its width and size but you have again got about eight miles of fishing to play with and the top half runs through a series of mini canyons, tiered pools, lovely areas to find fish and spot fish, uh, boulders which are sort of almost erratic in the middle of the river system which provide perfect cover. And then as it flows down through into the mid and lower stretches, this very much reminded me almost of like a mini Rio Grande. So you've got a lot of glacial moraine that the river then sweeps through and this is an extremely easy environment, very easy accessed uh, for those who maybe don't want to be quite as mountain goat-like and fish the upper part of Caldercliffe. This is a perfect spot for you to access. All the vehicles can get right up against the pools. It's very easy to fish. It's very easy wading. And here quite often when the wind drops, you will get a lot of char rising. And to fish dry fly for char and a few trout as well, then you're really going to be in for a treat. As I've said, uh, both of these rivers, I would say you, your target species is going to be char. So this is where you want to go to go and catch good sized char. There are brown trout and some of the brown trout there are massive, but I wouldn't probably go there expecting to be fishing for more brown trout than char. It's definitely got more char in both river systems, but that's what makes it completely different. But there will be brown trout there and the brown trout that you will bump into will be pretty large. So both of these rivers are accessed from a wonderful little highland lodge which has been set up by Christian and Fish Partner and because there is no building allowed in this area they've had to refit out a pre-existing house which they've done a phenomenal job with. So it's nothing fancy, this is a trout lodge, it's not all frills and fancy dinners like you would normally have at some of the salmon fishing operations, but 
All the rooms are clean and comfortable. It is on a shared room basis, but each room has a sink in it. There is one big communal bathroom, which has got some brand new showers and fittings in, big hot power showers, which is exactly what you need after a day out on the cold river system. And there are very nice little touches, such as when you arrive, you will find a pair of slippers sitting on the end of your bed and a towel. So your slippers are there to slop around the lodge in. And then you will also be provided with a set of earplugs because you, we all know what it's like sometimes when you're sharing with friends who you probably haven't shared with for a while. There is a wonderful dining and communal sitting area, which is the perfect spot to unwind after a long day on the river and have a drink and tell fishy stories. The food is good and there's lots of it. And that's really all you really want at the end of the day. As I said, it's not fancy. It's just good solid cuisine, which you can fill up on and then hit the hay before you then get ready for another long day on the water. The lodge has a fully heated waiter room immediately outside and a big decking area for when the weather is nice and you can sit outside. Uh, they have a barbecue as well, which they will ramp up and use quite a lot. The lodge and its facilities are perfect for this kind of fishing and what you are trying to do there. The guides who operate out of here know the river extremely well and they are proper trout and char bums. I've got to say, they really, really are totally passionate about the fishing that they're doing up here and they will get you into some great fish. And quite often you'll find that if you want to, you can go and target maybe one of the lakes which is in the nearby area after dinner. Or there's even a little river that runs down the back of the lodge which has got plenty of char in it. So if you don't feel that you've had enough fishing, then you can get out there and catch a few more. If you are looking to do some trout or char fishing in Iceland, then I would highly recommend the Central Highlands area and these two rivers, the Kaldaklist and the Tungnau. There is also a small salmon river just at the bottom of the plateau called the Sandau, which if you want to add in a day or two hunting big salmon, then you can do that as well. But it makes a brilliant trip by itself. It's considerably cheaper than booking some salmon fishing. Um, but at the same time, it also works brilliantly as an add-on. So if you're already going salmon fishing, why not extend your stay in Iceland and experience this totally different, very unique and a very, very exciting fishery. As always, I hope you found that video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Christian, how do you pronounce Adolf? Avaldalur. What's that letter? Uh, it's E. You, you have to use your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like Avaldalur. Okay. Pretty good. easy. Yeah. You try it.